Hello guys, today I'm going to attempt a two inch body lift on this, on my driveway. As you can see the driveway is not very big and it's on a slope as well so I've got these ramps underneath here. A little bit of a squeeze this side but um, I think it's doable, definitely, so we'll give it a go. So the first body mounts are here on both sides. Next ones are here just in the wheel arch. The next one is just here, sill mount. The next one's right in the middle of the car, under here. The next one's at the back of the sill, just up in here. The next one is underneath this seat, you just flip it up and it's under there. The last one is just above the exhaust over there. Obviously all of these are on both sides. Lube them up. So you basically want to take the grill off and get to the tops of these bolts in here for this, these front body mounts. Um, it looks like they're 13 mil and underneath is 15 mil. I'm putting on a long extension and the ugga dugger. For the next ones, this is the rear of the engine bay and that is the top of the bolt there. Got to take the side panel out. Take this under tray panel out. Oh my god, there's a lot of water in here. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I've just taken out the grommet and you can see the bolt at the top of there. The next top of the bolt for the body mount is under this carpet here. Um, just got to undo the seats. Uh, there's one bolt just in there and there's one bolt just down there. Yeah, it'll be underneath this carpet. I did have to have an assistant just to get to this bolt here, um, just there, because it was just spinning. These ones under the back seat are actually captive as well. These rear mounts I found actually to be captive, so all you gotta do is just wind them out, easy peasy. The other things you wanna play with is the horn. You just take this nut off and pull the horn out from here. That'll allow you access to the radiator mount. The bolt just goes in there, and that's the actual mount itself. The same on the other side as well, so I've taken the horn off here. Um, I've got to the bolt which is up in here somewhere <laughs> and allows you to remove this mount. So everything is all wobbly now, which is nice, all nice and free. There's also a little T40 Torx bolt right down the bottom there, the end of my lovely long extension, um, right down the bottom. And that is for the steering column, um, so that can slide a little bit further out once the body and the chassis sort of separate. Right, so I'm about three hours in. Uh, I've got all the body mounts, all the body bolts off. Radiator mounts are all off. Um, so yeah, basically I'm gonna start jacking up one side. So I'm just gonna try and put the jack down here and try and lift just the one side. So it tilt about two inches, then I can probably put, hopefully, these in there. Um, just go from there really, one side at a time. Uh, I've left some bolts in just to locate so when I'm tilting it, it's not gonna fall off. Then I'm gonna jack it up nice and slowly just to see if any like brake lines or anything like that is catching, anything's pulling. Um, and then I can sort it out bit by bit. She's coming up. That's about two inches off. Maybe a bit less at the moment. Um, obviously there's some suspension travel to come down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I've ended up taking the side step off as well which is just here. So I might actually just put rock sliders back on it, but we do need some sort of step inside because that is our family car. That's our daily driver. <laughs> so as you can see just in here, that's our sort of gap. That's what we need to slide those bushings back in. I'm also putting this right underneath, so three blocks and a nice spreader plate here. Put it right underneath this B pillar. And this vehicle is already two inch lifted on the suspension and that is now with the blocks fitted, you can see that right in the middle. Um, so yeah, it's a big girl. <laughs> right, basically now I'm fitting the radiator mounts. I've kept the bottom ones completely stock and then just flipped these around. The glove. Just flip these over, so these were upside down and um, into the back in like behind there. So I flipped them over and now I'm gonna mm -hmm. bolt it right to the side there with the bolt coming through the back. So it's nice and easy. And then this one just mounts the same, you just got to drill the hole a little bit lower. So the next thing I did was modify this cowling. Um, I say modify, I literally cut this little corner off right in here so it clears just in there and it just fits back on in place perfectly. 
Ignore these shiny new screws. The little captive brackets are broken on here. There's still two. There's one there and one the other side as well. Um, that are still there, but I'll just put new ones in. Yeah, that's all the body bolts all tightened up. Absolute beast now. So much clearance here. Um, the only other things we really need to do, we've got the bumpers just to raise and we just need to do some brackets for those. But that's quite self-explanatory. Just gonna make some brackets and then just literally bolt them on. And uh, the last thing will be to sort out this gear stick in here. Excuse the mess. <laughs> so yeah, obviously it's got a bit shorter and it's now catching on the plate so it won't actually go into gear. Um, same with this little stub. Looks like it's cold outside. Sorry for the bad dad joke. I'm a father of two now. Right, so the next thing to do is take out the center console. So you can see I've started doing that. I've just taken the gear knob off. I've taken the uh, diff lock knob off. Uh, well, diff lock and high and low. Uh, this particular car's got diff lock because I put it in. So it's all coming out, switch panels out. A um, couple, couple of screws in here. Gonna be a couple of screws on the front here as well. Um, and then it should all start lifting out um, actually I need to undo this bolt down here as well in the gear stick so I can actually take this top part off and um, then the whole centre console should slide out after I've disconnected the cigarette lighter. So the most minimalistic way of doing it is just literally cutting a hole in the gear stick rubber just around here because that was just restricting the end play. Um, I've already butchered this before putting the diff lock linkage in but I will be sorting that out at some point and riveting it back on. I don't actually have a rivet gun, so that's why um, I haven't got around to doing it. So just one of those things. It's like owning a Land Rover, basically. But now gear stick's got all the play it needs. And yeah, it can all go back on. Some people will just extend the gear stick just by threading a piece on the gear knob. Um, it's another 50 mil higher. You can actually buy these online, so I'll show it to you on the screen now. The other thing that you could do is actually space out inside here. You can move the pivot point upwards um, about an inch, inch and a half, and then basically weld the bottom end of this shaft below the ball where it pivots on. Um, you need to weld an inch on that as well, and then use a spacer to space out this whole panel here. Um, that'll all bring it up an inch, but that's quite an involved job. Annoyingly, I've put it back together and realized I've got no gears. Um, I think this was just slightly over here, which is neutral. So that's the transfer box neutral. Um, so I can now put it all the way to high and move the gear selector into reverse because I need to go backwards. There's wheel chocks. And as you can probably see, it doesn't quite fit um, because we're hitting this so all I'm gonna do dun, 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 just gonna cut a little slot in it and um, should be fine so I think mission successful it drives okay but except for this squeak listen not quite sure what that is but um, I'll sort that out in due course if anyone has any suggestions then please let me know if you want to know the specs on this car tire size 285 75 16 Cooper STT Pros. It's got a Brit part 2 inch suspension lift and now it's got a 2 inch body lift as well. Let me know if I should do a review video of this car. Right, there's a finished product almost. Still got the bumpers to do remember but it looks pretty damn cool. It's giving it a good bit of height. Now I'm going to see if I can put some rock sliders on there soon as well but yeah I'm very pleased about that. It's taken me about two days or so but um yeah, all in all, I'm happy with how that turned out, uh, especially for a driveway job. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you want to see any more videos on Discoveries, Defenders, I've got a Turbo Beetle project on the go as well. Also an Air Ride Beetle that's for sale. Hit me up if you want to see any of those or want to hear about these cars a bit more. We'll be doing lots of sort of family camping videos and day trips and stuff like that in these cars as well coming up. So I'll be doing up that Defender behind me slowly but surely within the next year or so. I hope this video was informative and please let me know what you thought and if you do anything differently. I'm Callum from the Autumn Family Vlog and I'll see you next time. Bye.